Welcome to His House of Learning, podcast number eight. This is your host, Christian M. Z. Fulmer. Pax Atlantica, another false peace. Normally, I do not respond, especially soon after, to major world events, considering not much time has passed. Although the sequence of events has occurred in these last few years alone, along with the combination of other conflicts and situations, has prompted me, indeed I would say even uh, the Holy Spirit of which advised me that perhaps I need to speak upon these things, for I'm pretty sure many listening have questions, concerns, or at the very least, uh, <laughs> annoyances in regards to, well, current events in general. Of course, the focus would be that on, I was actually out of town on Saturday, out of state, if you will. And lo and behold, I noticed once again that the flags are at half staff. And then this, of course, as per usual, it's hard to tell on whether or not it was an event that happens here in the United States, or anywhere else for that matter around the world, because that's just the nature of how that goes. It wasn't until hours passed, which I became aware of the well, declaration of war in Israel against the organization known as Hamas. Now, the key thing is here is that, where does that lead to the Pax Atlantica? It says the peace of the Atlantic. And so you have more alliance and legions, a coalition, if you will, amongst NATO nations, predominantly that of North America, Europe. But as of recently, there's been an infusion of American influence in Western Africa through what is known as the Great Fragility Act due to, once again, the loss of direct, uh, direct input from the French due to their domestic disturbances over the summer as so the United States is hoping to capitalize off of that so as and there's as well as of course influence of that the Middle East amongst nations including that of well for the, both the Democrat and Republican parties unshakably within their own platforms their their friendship alliance partnership with the state of Israel and thus, it goes that with uh, Benjamin Net Netanyahu, along with the spokesperson for the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, has made it quite clear that they proceed, as along with along with the UN ambassador, have all made it quite clear that they perceive this attack as Israel's 9-11. And that is their quote. Now, regardless of the comparisons the important thing to keep in mind is the nature of America's 9-11, in which changed domestic and foreign policy for the upcoming decades. And I mean, if we all, those of us old enough to remember life prior to 2001, whether it be at airports or even at public parks, surely, surely the culture has changed. But I do plead, I do plead with my brethren that we stay the course. For whether this be a long-term fulfillment of prophecy or a short-term in which we will see, a, just, see just a, well, an inflammation of more occurrences around the world of which are biblical proportions indicating that indeed we are in the age of the age of approaching that of revelation or we know not the hour or the times of these things I mean you look back on the historical record so much else has happened but by all means I am not denying that we are that we are fulfilling a number of number of and falling into place more for the for the events of record 
to make what we know as the tribulation indeed possible. Far from it. But regardless, regardless, there are two sides of which we need to remain off of, for neither side is in the camp of the Lord God Almighty. And that is that of which seeks to maintain even the worldly aspects of the Pax Atlantica, headed by the Pax Americana, for indeed the United States remains as the strong man in this coalition. There are a number of others, you know, the, the Pax Pacifica, I guess you would can call in regards to the more Eastern nations, the more Eastern bloc, and there's amongst, you know, amongst others. For indeed, the nations at large, United States, major players, United States, China, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Russia, India, the whole of Europe, particularly Great Britain, etc., etc. You can lump in African and, Na and Latin American nations as well of a transition to weaken their nations in fitting with the global malaise, but at the same time making sure that they retain their advantages in the hierarchy as much as possible. For there is indeed no honor among thieves, using a, a maxim of un, really unknown origin. Where it holds true. <laughs> but it's, and on the other side is fearing the events. Fearing the events to the point where we just desire it all just to come to an end, and thus we are tempted to reach the precipice of despair. We are to neither find security in the American Empire, neither are we to find, re you know, find release in nihilism. In a, in a an adulteration of the fulfillment of biblical prophecy, just no longer wanting to deal with and endure and await what is to come in the timing of the Lord. But no, my dear listeners, we are to remain steadfast in the faith. For the Lord God is the one who makes nations rise and fall. He's the one that protects, that provides. Indeed, when our life is to come to an end on this side of heaven, to resurrect to that which is eternal and abundant, fulfilled. For to save the saints, we have, been, we have already begun our abundant eternal life. But its fruition, its, re its complete restoration, is with the death of this corrupt existence into that which is fully new. And for that we praise, and for that we await. We await. Brave. Wise. And ever just at peace. Looking over to Jeremiah chapter 8, starting with verse 5. This is for this is a this is foretelling that of Jerusalem of Judea to be overwhelmed soon by the Babylonians. But remember, the covenant with the Lord God, our relations to the Almighty, does not change. For he is no no respecter of persons, he is impartial to all men. He cares not whether he be Jew or Gentile. For it is not of the blood, it is not of our skin, it is not of our heritage, but it is indeed of the, the allegiance of our heart. And the allegiance of the heart desires the things of the Lord and not that of this world. For we, as Christ says, are in the world, but we are not of it. So indeed, true to serpents, we do what we need to do to go about our daily lives, but we are to be gentle as doves and not embrace in the embrace the confusion and just <laughs> I'd say dare I dare I dare say just the distractions and politics and nonsense 
of which constitutes the affairs of Antichrist. Let us not indeed be to waste our time with those who have no reverence for the very word of our Lord. For example, Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 5, and this, this can very well apply to our nation, and whether or not the United States of America persist in the near future is irrelevant. For whether it stands on paper or not, into or past our lifetimes, the question is, do we idolize the false peace of its reign, of its existence? For there, I will say, you will find no such thing. And as you've already witnessed, since our 9-11, since 2001, my dear listeners, for those of us who are old enough to surely remember this, remember the life prior, those of you who are too young to remember a life before then, look into it, and you will find, you will find, that in the place of peace has been deception, corruption, amusement, bread and circuses, to which I say, what is my evidence? The great number of those of us in the younger generations who decide to end their life, because in spite of the Pax Americana, the Pax Atlantica, the stronghold as of which us being a world power, we found no peace in our hearts, and it was not well with our soul. So with that said, let's turn to the Prince of Peace, for his reign is forevermore. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 5, Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit, they refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as a horse rusheth into the battle. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How do ye say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed, they are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? What wisdom is in them? If anything, 2020 should have been a grand lesson indeed. A valid question, once again with asked, what wisdom is in them? And that's just not those who draft the laws, who execute the laws, who judge, interpret the laws, but for those of us who preside over living out and weighing in, or perhaps being too amused to care for the nature of the law. My fellow Americans and Westerners at large, and no less, indeed our Eastern counterparts, I speak more directly to those within my more immediate circles and to that of my region. For I, fi I, f I find it that we have this preponderance to either worship our two-party system or to despise it to the point of just wanting things to no longer continue. Uh, indeed. Idolization or nihilism. Getting fat off of the off of the world or giving into the despair that it, of all it has to offer. Either way, eating out of the same trough. For you are not goats, you are not you are not mere beasts. And if anything, count yourselves as sheep, but I believe our good shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ, wishes to wishes to bring us out of this into green pastures. 
still waters. And yes, there will still be things happening. There will still be catastrophe and controversy and controversy. Well, hello, come on now. Come on now. Hear me out. When was the last time? Last time I speak to myself, because even if I've done it recently, why not do it more often, if not longer, if it can be helped? And it can be. To be still and know that he is the Lord. To just be nourished by his word. When you read scriptures, especially anything very, very, you know, very similar to that in the King James Bible, you find the sovereignty and the goodness and the holiness of the Lord God. You find the, well, complacency, depravity, and weakness of men. And yet, the Lord's arms are wide open. His covenant is ever merciful and gracious. And that I say, drink and eat, and be merry. Drink and eat and be merry, but also be ready to mourn, to stand your ground, to endure. For the fight, as I remind you, is not for our freedoms, for it was in the midst of our perceived freedoms. If I do recall, we did not get to our current state of affairs because we were vigilant, seeking wisdom, seeking the guidance of his Holy Spirit. Seeking the comfort that only he can give, rather than indulging in fleshly wares. Rather than being distracted by the words of men seeking stimulation. If I recall, we did not decide to become more serious about the reality of our world, as shown to us consistently if you look carefully at the scriptures old and new testament like you find that whether in a judea soon to be occupied by babylon or in a roman world speaking speaking greek that was the uh that was the common language at the time you'll find that there was need plenty of false peace the Pax Judaica or the Pax Romana. That peace was only that of satisfying the flesh, but not the soul, not the spirit. No edification of the mind when it's all said and done. I hearkened, verse 6, I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as a horse rushes into the battle. Everybody's ready for a good brawl when it comes to defending their rights, when it comes to defending mammon, their economy, their property. But alas, when it came to our households, when it came to our families, came to our neighbors, came to our churches, if not our workplaces, no fight to be had. Passivity, apathy, indifference. But then when, and then when it came to men like Donald Trump, who promised us what? Material prosperity. Oh, I'll keep you away from the blatant, the overt evils and perversions that the other side presents. Well, now we now we found peace once more. But no, my dear listeners, we are in this state because we accepted a false peace. And with that, what future does our land, does our people have, not just here in the States, but around the world? Verses 10 onwards. Therefore will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness, wanting more, wanting what they don't have. From the prophet even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. 
for they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying peace peace when there is no peace were they ashamed when they had committed abomination stopping there for a moment we speak of Donald Trump's amongst anybody else like him regards to once again well he kept you know he kept kept us on me away from our children she kept it from being institutionalized in the, in, the, in the military now if you're an adult and you indulge in it fine abomination is okay as long as you're over 18 and it's not being browbeaten into American inst, you know, inst, inst, institution otherwise if it's consensual it's okay if I do recall before and during his time of presidency he waved that rainbow flag proudly influencing the Republican Party the supposedly supposedly Christian and or Judeo-Christian you know, side of the equation but then again, if you really do look at the Democrat side, there are actually a fair number of those who identify as believers too. But alas, what is there to speak of being in, in, in the covenant, but not following it? Nay, nay, they were not at all ashamed neither could they blush therefore shall they fall among them that fall in the times of their visitation they shall be cast down saith the lord i will surely consume them saith the lord there shall be no grapes on the vine nor figs on the fig tree and the leaf shall fade and the things that i have given them shall pass away from them why do we sit still assemble yourselves and let us enter into the defense cities and let us be silent there for the lord our god hath put us to silence and given us water of gall to drink because we have sinned against the lord we looked for peace but no good came and for a time of health and behold trouble and it goes on to mention what the oncoming enemy the oncoming enemy dare i say indeed the possibilities, my brethren, are there. We can, there is, there is just boastful talk that the United States will be here until the end of the century. It's like almost a guarantee. These countries in here, is like these predictions, these prophecies, if you will. Oh, these countries shall persist. And yet, why, what do they measure? Mammon. They measure they measure flesh, blood, gold, silver, stone, wood, and now even what data, the capacity to calculate and process information. All these worldly, fleshly measures. Let me give you a little bit of background in regards to, if you, if you recall, the statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw in a vision interpreted by Daniel. The statue had a golden head, Babylon itself, a silver chest, two arms, the Medo Persians Empire, and the abdomen of bronze, the Greeks, the legs of iron, well, as far as we know, the Romans. But then, the feet of iron and clay, perhaps today or soon. We know about the first three for sure. What's so significant about this? Every single kingdom that succeeded was technically weaker and more frail than the previous, and yet was defeated by it. I want you to think about that. A progression of weaker political powers defeating the previous it was all the will of the Lord now once again am I saying that the United States shall fall in our lifetime no but neither should we be in despair of its defeat or overly anxious once again 
then no believer, no child of the living God should be long awaiting the sweet embraces of death. Ah. For you should indeed be living a life of strength, of power in his Holy Spirit, of sound mind, today. Regardless of situation and circumstance, because as we can see, it's all up to him. And if you and reading Jeremiah, who who and what should you be afraid of more of more? Who's you know who's in the White House? Who sits in who sits in power? The World Economic Forum, the World Summit, the European Union. We're the generals of NATO. Who's the Prime Minister or President of Israel? No, my dear listeners. Those men are set up in place and taken down in his timing. For if we recall, Babylon was a technological, commercial power unrivaled. And yet, who was it defeated by? The Persian Empire, that of which, as historians and even contemporaries of the time would say, was ruled by civilized kings and and as what is, what is highly highly educated sophisticated priestly class but amongst the masses were nomads and villages basically as many people saw them as barbarians so the Babylon Empire defeated by Unified hordes by mostly by force. And then what was this great power? Grand in number and might defeated by the Greeks, except at the time the Greeks were hundreds of small, individually militarily insignificant city states. Who were constantly fighting outsiders, and when they were done, such as the Persians, but then they were done, they were turning on and cannibalizing themselves. And yet, it was a Macedonian, Macedon, seen as the backwater of Hellas, of the Greek peninsula. It was a king of Macedon, Alexander, conquered the city states and decided to spread their culture, their language, across much of the known world. And so it was. The divided backwater Greeks Macedonians that were able to defeat the very political force, grand in number and wealth. Oh, well, but once again, nowhere near as commercially industrious, acute in trade and commerce as, as its predecessors, the Babylonians. And likewise, same thing. Greeks. Greeks, remember, the, after the death of Alexander, that empire divided into four kingdoms. And those four kingdoms we've gradually swallowed up. By who? The Romans. And the Romans, when you look at their history, were too, comparatively to that of the Macedonians and Greeks, insignificant people. The Lord raises up nations and tears them down. As far as we know, the Romans were that Iron Kingdom. And perhaps, perhaps their legacy, I'm not going to claim that I'm certain about the interpretation of the times, but perhaps their legacy, because after all, America, amongst so many other nations, models much of what they do after the Romans. And perhaps the Roman legacy has con continued in, into this day, and we may be very well a time of iron and clay strength that is there but nonetheless fragile and thus there has to be what projection peacocking greater greater degree of the use of the art of war and propaganda of which to make oneself look stronger than what one truly is at a given time and place and we're finding that around the world at large it may be the time of Iron and clay, or perhaps <laughs> we haven't seen it yet. 
Oh boy, imagine that. How much worse can it get? We haven't seen it yet. So what is this? What is this? And I, and I emphasize these things because the next election is coming up. As far as I'm concerned, seems as trends go, things aren't going to get any more stable. And if there is indeed a time of peace to follow, I don't think it's going to be what it cuts out to be. Being 32 years old, going on 33, yes, has the country remained peaceful compared to the rest of the world? By all means. But, has, but indeed, once again, has it been peaceful for the soul, for the heart, for the mind? Well, I'd say, especially amongst my generation, and even though the, even that of Generation Z, the fact that so many have decided to take their own lives, I would say, not quite. So who are we kidding ourselves? Who are we kidding ourselves when we've developed a culture of which people no longer have the motivation, no longer have the sense of self-preservation, no longer have not even enough worldly ambition to seek their own glory, their own welfare. No courage. No zeal. Of that of our even our pagan and heathen ancestors. Peace, peace. There is no peace. Luke chapter 12, verse 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock. This is speaking to the church, those of Christ's sheep, his disciples, the children, the adopted children of God. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms, provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And so how many people had no treasure, and thus their hearts gave out? Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning. Let your loins be girded about. Don't, don't be right there living according to your jollies, according to your fleshly desires and whims, for they come and go, and they're easily manipulated by a false peace, by the systems of the world. And your lights burning. You be redeemed of the Lord. You've been given the light. Now the spirit comes from him, not from you. Don't boast in it. Keep it burning. May it light your way, step by step. Walk in faith, step by step. We do it separately. We do it together, my dear brethren. Your trust is in not in the false light of men. For there is indeed a false light movement. If you know of a brother... John Blanchett, he's also known as E511 Ministries. <laughs> I'll admit, a little bit of an ornery fellow, but I do indeed love his, love the, love, love the, love, love the heart for the Lord, indeed the spirit of discernment, which he has. He hasn't posted anything recently. Recently, but, he's, and he, but he has quite a bit of work that is on the topics. And he, amongst others, warned, do not put your trust in men. For after all, there's a, there's, I've heard recently how we need so many, so many, it seems so many, the, 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 increasingly, the increasing voices, not just here in this country, but around the world. For some reason, I find it unnerving. I see men like Donald Trump, amongst others, to be saviors, to at least, at least postpone, to at least hold back the tide of destruction. And whether or not that is true, the reality is this, he is not, people have compared him to Cyrus the Great, but my dear listeners, Cyrus the Great, and even his, even his successors had far more reverence for the Lord God than Donald Trump has, has had so far in his life. And so I say that is a dangerous game to be playing. 
dangerous game to be playing indeed. If I just, and once again, if you look back on the four years of his presidency, was there truly preparation? Repent? Was there a state? Was there a spirit of repentance, of being in the law, being in the will of the Lord, life of prayer and fasting, steadfastness in, in storing up treasures in heaven, in which to prepare the nation for what would unfold post 2020? And the clear answer is no, because the economy is metal, it's paper, it's, it's pixels. And that indeed faces corruption, that indeed does not last. Is this, is the things of heaven, the things of the spirit, that of the eternal word of the Lord, that's what will endure regardless of what happens that is what that's what what is what that's what keeps men not just alive but he made anew made anew and ready to face whatever happens for as our lord and savior jesus christ will overcome the world so shall and can we let your loins be girded about and your lights burning Verse 36 onward, And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. And how many men have allowed their homes, whether it be single, married, or families, allow their homes to be robbed? Their hearts, souls, their minds just plundered. Just raped and pillaged. And continually make concessions, make make you know concessions, and pay tribute, compromise to at least keep the false peace, the promise the the, the you know the, the, the you know, promises of covetousness of economic material prosperity. In other words, what does a man gain? He has so much of the world, and yet loses his soul. As thing, you probably think, am I against the Republican Party? Only? Of course not. I've already told you, I'm against both both sides. They're just it's it's the unit party. It's the two party system. For goodness' sakes, that name itself should be a pretty big clue. And it's no fool. And why am I going to bother? Father, you know, railing against the party. We've already seen the current presidency. We've already seen the current administration and all those who serve under them, who serve under them and, su and serve, you know, through, you know, through, you know, through them and how much they care not for the Lord. But aside from, and that's the blues, but aside for the reds, just like, they're just like their blue counterparts in regards, it's, it's just idolatrous, covetousness, ecumenicism. For goodness sakes. The four, we got the four, among the four major candidates for the Republican side, we got Donald Trump, who is a modern, a modern Hellenist, Greco-Roman heathen, with family, with you know, with family and uh, family in, in Orthodox Judaism, amongst other, you know, amongst you know, amongst other, you know, amongst other systems of belief and spirituality, you have Ron DeSantis, a staunch Roman Catholic. You have Vivek Ramas, you know, Ramaswamy, who is a monotheistic Hindu, and then also you want to throw in Nikki Haley, who likewise is ecumenical in that she is, quote, quote, a Christian with her United Methodist husband, but nonetheless still engages in her Sikh background, engages in Sikh spiritual, spirituality and ceremony, certain holidays, especially when visiting her parents. In fact, she's even said that she cares not whether or not they become Christians, that they, quote, 
do what is best for them. So once again, and what was Babylon? What was Persia? What was Greece? What was Rome? They all touted justice, prosperity, peace, and yet they all did what they had no fear of the Lord. And just like Judea, Judea too became like Egypt, fell. The, city, the great city of Tyre for centuries was seen as an indestructible city-state, fell. To who? Alexander the Great and his formerly backwater army of Greeks and Macedonians. The Lord raises and tear down nations. But he preserves his people. He provides for those in his fold. His flock is secure, not in everything that they want, but in all that they need, especially for his good work. Lastly, 1 Timothy chapter 6. And that's another thing too is, once again, this preponderance of trying to either maintain ourselves within the Pax, the Pax you know, Atlantica, because a lot of us, perceive, even though we're American citizens, perceive ourselves as global citizens, as citizens of, of the world. It's a, you know, it's a very popular thing, even amongst even amongst conservative and Christian, quote quote Christian, you know, universities and colleges, trying to maintain our place, secure our spot, be, you know, trying to be in the world as much as we can as much as we possibly can, but try not to be of it, but of course, when you straddle the fence like that, it's, it's a no-brainer that you're gonna end up setting your foot on the wrong side more often than you would think, and that's how temptation works, that's how covetousness works. Gets to a point now where, think about this, think about this, my dear listeners, the will of the people, the people are sovereign, is that according to the scripture? Is that according to the scripture? If you know, if, if the if the uh, if the political powers don't recognize that that the, you know the, the you know the rights that you've possessed, you get to overthrow them, and it's still the will of the people. Is that biblical? Because I find it interesting how there's a number of voices. Both sides, of the, both think about this. This is both sides of the equation, both left and right wing, in which say that they they have a con. They're they're as much as they disagree, if not hate each other. There's this thing of, well, we need to accept the reality that we live in a two party system, and so thus we need to keep it. We need to participate and keep it going. Except and why? Because you know, for the will of people and America is. You know, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's the strongest, most free nation. Well, free to do what? You know, it's kind of strange how it's how everybody always scapegoats the South. Southern rights, and of course, the joke is to do what? To do what? Meaning, you know, you do mean slavery? Oh, except the same could be asked of the North, and same could be asked of our modern life. To do what? The freedom to 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 uh, to do what? Engage in usury, sodomy, abortion, amongst other things. Freedom to, to, to do what? Well, we're trying to eliminate those things, except we're willing to what? Join hands with those who are not going to eliminate them, just limit them, but they still can be practiced just to a degree. Because after all, we have to what? Maintain the, the, the Pax Americana, if not the Pax Atlantica. Because after all, remember, don't forget, uh, earlier this year, President Joe Biden declared the... You know the more the the uh, declared the North American Declaration. You know it's a further partnership, you know further in intertwined partnership amongst the nations of Canada, the United States, and Mexico. And you know diversity, inclusion, equity, climate change, uh, secure, you know by you know migration. So you know being more flexible in how we move people across borders. <laughs> Be more and more flexible to draw people across boards. You can seriously go check out the WhiteHouse.gov. It's the North Declaration of North America, President Joe Biden. 
In fact, he even hints that the president of Mexico purposefully allowed allowed uh, tens and hundreds of thousands of migrants come through Mexico from Central America as a part of this you know, partnership. Anywho, but then as once again, two party system, I mean, but then you want to work with people who want to limit, but still allow usury, sodomy, abortion, etc. And then for those of us who don't want to participate in the system anymore, well then, some people even say, you, you should leave. It's kind of strange too, because the irony is, it's also said that, well, we need to participate in the system. Why? Because then we are rejecting what our founding fathers fought and died for. And to me, that is foolishness, because if you also look at what the founding fathers said, you shouldn't accept this. You shouldn't tolerate it. You, you shouldn't be complacent with the current state of affairs. For goodness sakes, they said we're not participating in this, in this British Commonwealth anymore. We're going to create our own governments, and if you try to subdue us, we'll shoot you. Granted, you can look through, look, look at that, and arguably, there's only one third of one third of the American colonial population that actually said that and did it. So, that's another debate. That's another thing to look into. That's another thing to be mindful of <laughs> when it comes to our historical record and the nature of the relationship between the common man and the political authorities have been established throughout the centuries. So yeah, either way, whether it be accepting the two-party system is not is neither biblical, nor is it even in, in accordance with the early revolutionary wishes of the founders. <laughs> but I digress on this point, because once again, what does the scriptures have to say about these things? First Timothy chapter 6. I dare say, my dear brethren, our first top most priority should not be the acquirement of political power and economic gain, but in making sure that we are right with the Lord and our households, stand upon the, the firm, unshakable, unmovable rock that is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And not to have anything else other, whether it be the, the, the American government, a political party, and, you know, entities such as any Protestant you know, denomination, organization, any pseudo-church such as the Roman Catholic Church, any cult such as the most, Amer most American of them, the Mormon temple, the Mormons will be the next segment of the Members of Mystery Babylon series. I'll be connecting them to a lot of current things, including the Chosen, as well as that of mainstream American politics, and also what is known as quote-unquote quote, independent politics and alternative economy. Where they have quite a bit of, uh, their, a bit of their tendrils in that as well. Beware, beware. The Mormons which wish in their own way to preserve, and they're succeeding quite well, the Pax Americana, if not the Pax Atlantica. More on that on my main channel, His House of Learning. Coming, coming hopefully soon. With that said, chapter 6, 1 Timothy, Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. So here's the thing. Is your first prime concern offending the Lord? Or trying to, quote, attain, attain your freedoms? The enlightened version of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. A sovereignty of the people. Because after all, don't forget, that was one of the wishes, in, in, in a way, one of the wishes of the Israelites who refused the kingship of the Lord in favor of that of the man who they were given full instructions 
that hey, if you surrender, if you, if you surrender, if you delegate this power, this authority to this man in his court, corruption and strong arming and usurpation of your, you know, of your, you know, of, you know, of your line of work, your, your household, and your very well-being shall unfold. Let the Lord deal with these things, first and foremost. First and foremost. Listen carefully. Verse 2 onward, And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to, to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. What are you, what are you, wake, what are you waking up for on a daily basis? What treasure are you accumulating? Where is your heart? Are you idolizing a false peace, a Pax, a Pax Romana, a Pax America, a Pax Atlantica, a Pax Europa, a Pax Pacifica, a Pax Africana, wherever you are in the world? Or is your heart is your heart failing? Because these things don't suffice. Well, of course not. It's not the way, the truth, and the life. So yes, your life feels like it's ending, because you refuse, you refuse to eat of his, you know, to eat the bread of life, his word, to drink the water of life, to eat a sup with that, sup from that of his Holy Spirit. You allow, you fail to allow him to be shepherd over yourself, if not your very home. And it's a reminder to me as well to press in, to abide in him, lest my heart fail. For indeed, my dear listeners, there's no telling what will take place. Major events are unfolding. I mean, after all, for a while, the three major conflicts of which have been talked about for years is that between Russia and Ukraine, or NATO and, U NATO and Russia, if you will. So we're already halfway there, in essence, with that one. Between Israel and, and Iran, well, Israel's at war with Hamas, and Hamas is said to be an extension of Iran. So we're halfway there with that one. Next major one is between the United States and China. And my sister, amongst, I found out from my sister amongst others that the next the next year that there'll be a that a lot of people will be redeployed for more frequent and larger patrols of the South China Sea and the, well, the Pacific at large. There's no telling what will occur in due time and how it will unfold, whether we will stay afloat, whether we will win or lose, there's no telling, but beware. Beware of the of peace, of peace, people say, but there is no peace. And why? All you gotta do is look at, is there any fear of the Lord? Is there any, is there any repentance, any reverence for his word? Is it shocking then to see confusion? To see strife? 
to see idolatry, to see abomination, to see perversion, to see men lose, to see men's hearts giving out, to see men, men you know, clinging, you know, clinging to to their loins. Just total loss of moral courage. <laughs> no, and by all means, by all means, as I say again and again and again, may you be fruitful and multiply within your own homes. May you fear the Lord God with all your mind, soul, heart, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. First and foremost, may those two commandments. That is old and new and still of the same. Be fulfilled within your four walls. First and foremost, first and foremost, regardless of what's happening outside, and continue to fellowship and worship with those who, who strive, who get it on hand and knees to do so. Encourage one another, lift one each other up, edify one another. Do not place your hope in men, in the systems that we have in place, thinking that, oh, well, how can it fall? It's so strong, so much stronger than everything else. <laughs> Don't have the same stupid attitude that they had about the uh, Titanic. And whether or not it was done, that sank purposefully, it wasn't supposed to. It wasn't supposed to. Right? But at the same time, don't despair. Do not be dismayed. For you have a good shepherd. And he will lead us ever to green pastures and still waters. And remember, Psalm 23, verse 3. He restores my soul. How so? By leading me on paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Live rightly, live justly. Don't live for your freedoms. Don't live for your prosperity. Terms economically. Let, not, let us not follow an Aristotelian, a Greco-Roman pursuit of happiness. Unless your heart will fail. Unless your heart will fail. Last passage. But thou, O man of God... Verse 11 of chapter 6, 1 Timothy, Flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you not know if you'll see him in your life or after the last breath of your life. And we don't know not when that is either now, do we? Verse 15, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. That said, that said, my dear beloved brother, may we enter into the throne room of our Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Lord and Lords, the potentate of all that has, is, and will be. For he is the Word, the way, the truth, and the life. And with that, our hearts shall not fail. And we will outlast any kingdom, any false system of men. This is Christian M.C. Fulmer. Signing out.